Let us say we abide in the word of God. And the word of God abides in us. We produce good fruit for the kingdom of God. The love of God the Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us now and forever. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Of today's sharing, it's not a long sharing as such. Hallelujah. It is not a long sharing. It's a sharing which is going to empower you and I. Hallelujah. It is going to empower you and I. So, we thank God for bringing us to this place. Let us go to Psalm chapter 42. Psalm chapter 42. It says, I'm going to read from verse 1 up to 8 in Psalm chapter 42. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says, As the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul, O God, for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night, while they continually say to me, Where is your God? When I remember thee, these things, I pour out my soul within me, for I used to go with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God, with the voice of joy and praise, with the multitude that kept a pilgrim feast. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. O my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore I will remember you from the land of Jordan and from the heights of Hermon, from the hill Misa, deep calls unto deep at the noise of your waterfalls. All your waves and billows have gone over me. The Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says deep calls unto deep at the noise of your waterfalls. This is a hunger for God. The psalmist says, as a deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul, O God. This is an expression of hunger for God, which is very rare in our generation. In our generation, if you see people in nature service, a crowd of people in a church service. They've come to get something from God. Hallelujah. If you see a pampa crowd of people in a church service, it's very rare that that pampa crowd will be actually seeking the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's very rare. During our times, when you see multitudes upon multitudes of people, it's easy to, I mean, to readily conclude that they are actually looking for something from God. They are seeking something from God. They are not really seeking God. But today, the purpose of this message is that, is to inform us that we become richer spiritually if we seek God instead of seeking what God has. I want us to confess and say from now onwards, I am not only going to seek what God has, but I'm going to seek the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us confess and say, Oh Lord Jesus, may you connect me to your presence. I desire your presence more than my necessary food. Hallelujah. I don't know what is troubling you in your life. That thing which is troubling you in your life is in your life so that it can point you to Jesus, the author and the finish of our faith. Hallelujah. 
That situation which you are facing, which is refusing to change, it's for the salvation of your soul. I want you to confess and say my negative situations and my challenges are meant for the salvation of my soul. Yes. They are not meant to destroy you. Let me show you something from the Holy Scriptures. Let us go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. That negative situation which you are facing, that negative situation which you are facing as a country, is not meant to crush us or to destroy us, but it is meant to draw us very close to God to prepare us for a higher level in Christ, to prepare us for a deeper life in Christ, to prepare us for a more fruitful and productive life in Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I'm, I'm going to start from verse 6. Hallelujah. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in your hearts to give the light of the knowledge. I will take it again. It says, for it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. I want us to, co to confess those words. Let us say we are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not for a second. Struck down, but not destroyed. Let us confess for the last time. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not for a second. Struck down, but not destroyed. Hallelujah. I don't know whether you have seen those verses of script. That as Christian believers, sometimes we are hard pressed. We are hard pressed. We have got situations which press us from every direction. But those situations are not there to crush us. This is the message that I'm releasing even to, to, to people who, watch, who follow our messages on the internet. That whatever negative situation you are facing, it is not meant to crush you. Hallelujah. That setback which you are experiencing, it is not meant to crush you. I want you to say, I'm not going to be crushed by negative circumstances. But they've come to prepare me for a higher level. In Christ. Hallelujah. Every negative situation has come for a purpose in your life. It has not come to destroy you. Hallelujah. We go, we go through trials and tribulations, not so that we can give up on our faith, but so that we can hold on to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. This negative situation which you are going through, it is there to prepare you for a higher level in Christ. Because there is a higher level in Christ. But you cannot attain to that higher level in Christ unless you are touched by negative circumstances and situations. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ really desires to meet you at your point of need. But for him to meet you at your point of need, you have to open your heart even as you are going through negative circumstances and situations. You must not allow your negative circumstance or situation to deceive you into thinking that God has abandoned you. Hallelujah. God has not abandoned you. Say, God has not abandoned me. Hallelujah. Because if you look at a cow, 
it remembers its calf. Even if it is grazing five kilometers away from, from home, it still remembers its calf. If a, if a cow remembers its young one when it is a created thing, how much more for God who created us? I want you to say, even though God may be in heaven, he remembers me. Yes, there is never a moment when God has forgotten you. When we pray and say, God, remember me, we'll be pleading with God to turn around our situation, not to imply that God has forgotten us, because it's impossible for God to forget us. Hallelujah. I mean, if you, are, if you, if you entertain the thought that God forgets you, when you are his child and when you address God as your father, you will be meaning that uh, God is actually worse than an animal because an animal does not forget its young. When there is a hawk, you know a hawk or an eagle which is flying past, a hawk or a falcon or an eagle which is flying past, a hen quickly remembers that it has got chicks. Hallelujah. If the hawk tries to catch one of the chicks, the hen will actually run after the hawk to defend its chicks. So God is always there to defend my position. Let us confess and say, God is always there to defend my position. But now the main challenge which we have is loss of God consciousness. Say loss of God consciousness. When we go through situations which we don't like, sometimes we lose perception of God, consciousness of God. You and I, even when you are going through tough situations, you must know that God is there, even if you are going through adversity, even if you are going through temptation. That's why Jesus Christ refused in the wilderness when he was being tempted by the devil. He said, men shall not live on bread alone, but by each and every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. The reason why he was rebuking the devil by quoting the word of God is because he, Jesus Christ had a consciousness of his father. He said, I, can, I of myself, I can do nothing. Let us go to John chapter 5. Even as we are going to John chapter 5, I want you to say, I hunger for God. I thirst for his presence. Say, I hunger for God. And I thirst for his presence. Say, I hunger for God. And I thirst for his presence. I want to read from verse 19. John chapter 5, verse 19. Then Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the father do, for whatever he does, the son also does in like manner. For the father loves the son and shows him all things that he himself does. And he will show him greater works than this that you may marvel. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ says the son can do nothing of himself. So whatever Jesus Christ did, he acted with God. I want you to hold your head and say, O oh Lord God, I sanctify all of my thoughts so that I, I may think with you, talk with you, and act with you. Say, O oh Lord Jesus, may you take more of me and give me more of you. Hallelujah. Because Jesus Christ, he completely emptied his own will. And he then, in its space, he put the will of God to the Father. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ totally emptied himself of his own will, of his own personal will. At one moment he said, I did not come here to do my own will. I came to do the will of the one who sent me. I want you to confess like Jesus Christ. Say, I did not come to this world to do my own will. But I came to do the will of my heavenly father. Yes. When you, if you know that you have come to do the will of your heavenly father, 
It doesn't matter who else is with you or is not with you. When God is involved in a matter, it, it becomes irrelevant who else is involved or not involved. When God is involved in your life, it doesn't matter how many people are not involved. Because when you are with God, you are majority. Say, when I'm with God, I am majority. Yes. You can be with God. God was the ninth person in the ark. In the ark of Noah. He was the ninth person. The whole world was perishing outside. But because God was with Noah, that's why Noah inherited the world of his time. I declare to you that in as much as you are with the presence of God and you have begun to hunger for the presence of God, you are going to inherit the wealth of your enemies. Say, in as much as I am with God and my position is supported by God, I am going to inherit the wealth of my enemies. Because Naturally and by faith, you are a descendant of Noah. And Noah is a person in a sinful and in a wicked generation who had caught consciousness. When people were busy sinning against God, imagining evil things, Noah received the thoughts of God. He knew that even though it was also a time of sinning, it was supposed to be a time of preparing for the end of the world. For those who were thinking with God, talking with God and acting with God. I want you to lift up your right hand and say, Oh Lord Jesus, may you grant me the grace to think with you, to talk with you, and to act with you. Do you know where most of our problems come from? They come from that statement which we just spoke. Most of our problems. What statement did I speak? I said, let us pray the prayer again. Say, oh Lord Jesus, may you grant me the grace to think with you, to talk with you, and to act with you. The, the, the statement which I just spoke, it summarizes what a Christian life should be all about. The reason why we read the word of God is so that we saturate ourselves with the thoughts of God, so that we are able to hear the thoughts of God. You have seen me stand in front of people. The reason why I am able to know things which they wouldn't have told me, it's because at that time I will be thinking with God. Hallelujah. I allow God to, to think through my mind. If you allow God to, to think through your mind, your thoughts will not fail. Let me show you something about human thoughts, which you may not immediately realize. Let us go to Psalm chapter 94. Something about human thoughts. I know some of you, you think you are smart. You are always thinking, Uzubam Bislat, thinking that you are smart. Let me tell you something. As long as you are not thinking the thoughts of God, you are just wasting your time. What you are thinking is just hot air. Look at your neighbor and say, as long as you are not thinking the words of the thoughts of God, what you are thinking is just hot air. Who's coming? Hello, my old sister. I'm coming in zone. Do I'm coming? Ubu cool. Ubu man. I say, I go to sitting room. We have a good church of Christ. Ila lounge. I'm a sofa and corner. 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 Ten times. First go myself. You can think all of that. Huh? <laughs> but you'll be thinking what eh? Say what eh? That's what the Bible means by vanity. Vanity just means air, which is moving. It means something which is nothing. Say nothing. Yes. I don't know. But if you are thinking with God, now if you think the word of God in a specific situation, or God impregnates you with the word of knowledge, instead of you thinking according to your immediate circumstances, you think according to the word of God, then you will be able to walk in, in the realm of God. It's easy to live in the realm where God lives. You just meditate on his word. You think 
his, according to his word. That's how you think the thoughts of God. It doesn't mean that you fall asleep and then you start to dream how God thinks. That's not what we are talking about. We are talking about the word of God in you. The word of God abiding in you. Say the word of God abiding in me. Is my source of victory. There is nothing which can defeat anyone who abides in the word of God. Say I abide in the word of God. To abide in the word of God. Because the word of God, we know the word of God is not a place. You can say I abide at church of Christ. It makes a lot of sense because it's a place. But to say I abide in the word of God, it means I live in harmony with the word of God. It means the word of God is in me because you can't live in harmony with what you do not. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can only live in harmony with the word of God which you know. You cannot follow the commands which you do not know. Hallelujah. 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 So, now, to, to live in the realm of the Almighty God, it means to internalize the word of God so as to think the thoughts of God, to talk with the talk of God, the speech of God. When Jesus Christ heard that Lazarus was dead, he didn't say, ah, Lazarus is dead, I'm going to make a command of faith so that he resurrects. He said, Lazarus, our friend, is sleeping. Yes. He didn't say he is dead. He said he is dead when they said, ah, if he is sleeping, he is going to wake up. He said, no, I tell you that he is dead. He was now speaking their language. But the language of God the Father was that Lazarus is sleeping. And when a person is sleeping, you can call them. That's why now in the vocabulary and in the world of Jesus, which is the world of God the Father, Lazarus who was asleep was told to come forth according to John chapter 11, the account of his resurrection in John 11, and he rose from the dead. Hallelujah. Say my finances, which are not in order, they are sleeping. I command them right now. My finances wake up in the name of Jesus. Say my spiritual life, which is not in order. I declare that it is sleeping. I command it to rise up right now. In Jesus' mighty name. Say my divine connections, which are not working right now. I declare that they are sleeping. I command them. I say to them, my divine connections wake up in the name of Jesus. Say my opportunities to succeed, which are dead at the present moment. I decree that they are sleeping. I command them by a command of faith to wake up. I say my opportunities wake up in the name of Jesus. I say my opportunities wake up in the mighty name of Jesus. I command you from the north from the south, from the east, from the west. I say connect with me even right now. Rise up from sleep in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. 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 When you start to confess like that, you'll be thinking the thoughts of God. Say, I am thinking the thoughts of God. Say, I am thinking the thoughts of God. There is a scripture that I promised you that I want to read. 
It's Psalm chapter 94. I've not forgotten. Mark over is as long as 94. Psalm chapter 94. I want to show you about us human beings. Psalm chapter 94. Say, O Lord Jesus, I want to think your own thoughts. I want us to go to verse 11. It says, The Lord knows the thoughts of men, that they are futile. The Lord knows the thoughts of men, that they are futile. Some translations, they say, The Lord knows the thoughts of men, that they are vanity. Hallelujah. That's what some translations say. They say, God knows the thoughts of men, that they are vanity. Vanity is futility. What air? Say what air. Yes. The Bible says God knows, the Lord knows the thoughts of men, that they are futile. Man has got a lot of thoughts. Some, some, thoughts, some thoughts of a man, they appear very smart because they will be mathematical. They will tell you x squared plus this plus that is equal to that, but all of that is futility. It can't give you an eternal question. Hallelujah. It's only the thoughts of God which can give you an everlasting salvation. Say, O Lord Jesus, I connect with you right now for an everlasting salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've come here just to tell you one message. I don't have a long message. It's just to tell you that Jesus Christ is looking for us in the prayer closet where you will be having that intimate relationship with God. Each and every one of us, I know you have your own personal needs. Maybe you need a healing in your body or you need financial breakthroughs. Nowadays, people, they love financial breakthroughs. Uh, it's not wrong to look for a financial breakthrough. Whatever it is that you need from Jesus Christ, I want to assure you that when you seek the presence of God, you are going to get everything which you desire from God. Hallelujah. The master key is to seek the most important thing. And the most important thing is the presence of God. Hallelujah. 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 I want to give you one minute to seek the presence of God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you even as we are in this place. We thank you, Lord, that you are giving us the grace to seek your divine presence. Father, we pray even at such a time as this one that you have anointed us to, to be in this place to seek your divine presence, almighty God. We know, Father, that you have got a great plan for us, a plan to prosper us and not to harm us, almighty God. I pray that in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, let your Holy Spirit begin to touch and to transform our lives. Let your Holy Spirit do a new thing. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Makutsuna karabasana karabasiki andarakonde reveshi. Riki zungunda kirisukuta kibosaya. Zembendika tsukuma tsika suna karabasoto. Shimende lelebo sata. Bakautsukuna karabasiki endelelebo sata. Mambru zuku ndika tuku masipra kita kibo saya. Zembrende keshi manda. Urika tumanda karabasana karabasukuye. Zembrende ke tuku masiprasko diakomo. Meke tumanda karabasiki endelele bo usata. Father, we pray, we say, God, let your spirit begin to do a new thing in our lives, Almighty Father. May you begin to touch us even this day, even as we seek you, Almighty God. Let your spirit locate us. Let your anointing locate us. May you begin to do a new thing in our lives, Almighty God. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are a good God, that you are a gracious God, a loving God. Father, we thank you for your anointing and your divine power, that this is our season to arise and shine. We declare in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that in this season, we are rising and shining by your own grace, Almighty God. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
libra soto makasilete so komende kelebo satan mukutsuna karabasiki andelele bo satan zambrondi katsukuma shimbrasto kinombre kere mokotsele kana kaste kinombre zukatikina karabasana rikitsumanda karabasana shimbra ndikatsukuma zingendelele bo satan Zingendelele kuma sita kibo saya. Ingi tika tukuna karaba sikia. Ingi tika rika tuma karaba sana. Ingi tikisto kinombre. Mambru zukuya sepre ndeke shimanda. Atimana karaba saya te kereba suku ndika soto. Simbra sita kibo soto makashile te. Zengetelele bu sata. Buku tuna karaba sikia ndelele bu sata. Zambrendeke tumunda karabasaya. Shimbra sete kum. Mambru zukunda karabasiki etelelebo usata. Zambrendika tukum. Zambrendika tuna bayabasana riyabasaya. Shimbra lipra hoste kena keta riyabasoto. Seprendeke tumanda karabasiki endelelebo usata. Father we pray even this day. We say God let your Holy Spirit begin to meet us. At our point of need, even as we long for your presence, almighty God, may your Holy Spirit begin to touch us. In such a time as this one, may you begin to transform us, O oh God. As we seek your divine presence, may you begin to do a new thing in our lives. May you begin to transform our weaknesses and substitute them with your strength, almighty God. As we seek you, even in this, in this day, we say flat our lives. With the light of the gospel. We say flat our lives with the light of the gospel. Even in this season. We long for you almighty God to touch us. We long for you almighty God to transform us. We long for you almighty God to do a new thing in our lives. Even as we present ourselves unto you in your presence. We say God. May you do a new thing in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh, zombrende ke tukuna. Zambrende ke tukuna makasile te. Shimbrende ke tukuna makasoto makasianda. Zembrende ke tukuma. Shimbrende ke tukuto makasile te. Zembrende ke tika tukusu na kalabasaya. Zembrende ke tukuya seke te. Zondo makasina ko shata. Ribasu sta kina soto makasianda. Mambru zukuta kibo soto. Shembre ndeke tukuma sinakonda. Oh, shimayandele bo sata. Banaki na kuna basaya tika suna. Shembre ndelele bo sata. Rikatuma ndika tukunda. Father, we seek your presence even this day. We say, God, we long for your anointing. We long for the atmosphere of your divine presence. To do a new thing in our hearts. May you sanctify our hearts with your word, O oh God. Let your word do a new thing in our so God. May you transform us for your divine will. That we may live for your divine will and your divine purpose. We long to, to live for your divine will and your divine purpose. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Father, we worship you. Father, we thank you even for bringing us to this place. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you for your anointing and your presence. We thank you for your anointing and your divine power. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you for your anointing, Almighty God. We say this is our season to experience a divine touch from you, Almighty God. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, Shiba Diabasana Diabasaya. Riki Tumanda Karabasoto Makashilete. Zungundi Katsukum. Riki Asana Komtekina Kalabasaya. Zimbra ndika tukuta kalaba soto. Riki sita kibo saya te. Ando kita diaba sukuma sita. Riba soto maka shile ndai. Reke tukuma simbra. Arikina kousta kerebo setai. Zambenda kalaba soto maka shile ndai. Oh, riba sina kousta. Oh, thank you Holy Spirit. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Holy Spirit. In Jesus mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer is like a journey in the spirit. Hallelujah. You must have a sense of direction and a sense of speed. Say, do you, 
when you pray, ask someone close to you, say when you pray, do you feel a sense of direction and speed? Or you just pray? Because prayer is a journey. When Jesus Christ was nearing the end of his journey here on earth, let me show you the gears that he, he was using. He was not just praying and saying, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. There is time for that. There is time for just lifting up your hands and saying, Father, I thank you for you have heard me. He couldn't pray at such a low gear. Hallelujah. Say gear. Different strokes, they require different responses in the spirit. Hallelujah. Different strokes, they require different responses in the realms of the spirit. Say gear. Yeah. Say gear. Yeah. Say gear. Yeah. Yes. There are some of your blessings which will never manifest until you enter the gear of Hannah. Go and read 1 Samuel chapter 1 when you get your time. I know you will get it. 1 Samuel chapter 1. When you are barren and you need a child, you can't just sit and say, God, you know what, God, uh, I've been married for the past seven years. I need a child. <laughs> Do you think that kind of prayer can bring a child? Say gears. Yeah. If you have got a stop on problem, you need stop on prayers. If you are climbing an incline or you are crossing a sandy place, you don't need normal gears. You need four-wheel drive. Say four-wheel drive. And in some cars, it is called overdrive. Say overdrive. The scriptures that I'm going to read to you are an example that in seeking God, whether you are close to God or you are far away from God, you must change gears. If you want God to move in your life, you must move towards God. He says in James, draw nigh unto me and I will draw nigh unto you. Let me show you that script before I read the prayer of Jesus. Because my message is not very long, very soon I will be praying for people. He says, draw nigh unto me, and I will draw nigh unto you. That's what he is telling you this evening. Isn't it, this is a prophetic service. Some people, they think a prophet is to tell a person that you are born you already know your name. It may assist your faith for us to tell you what you already know, but it may not take you very far. What can take you very far is when we tell you that for your situation to change, for your stop on situation to change, it needs stop on prayers. If your situation is like this, you can't use normal gears, you need four-wheel drive of a spiritual life. You can't use normal spiritual life when you are climbing a Mount Everest kind of a spiritual problem. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, you heard when we were praying, we were changing gears in the spirit. Changing gears. Changing gears. Some of you, you have never prayed beyond what is called the snake line. The snake line. The snake line. If you see everyone in church, people falling on chairs on their own, and people begin to speak in tongues spontaneously, the, the church congregation as a whole would have passed beyond the snake line. The, the realm where demons are, are busy doing a lot of activity and preventing Christians from going anywhere. It's called the snake line. The snake line, it's a place if an aeroplane is, or a helicopter is carrying a snake, a place where the, the snake falls on its own. There is a level in the atmosphere where a snake won't be able to breathe, where it fails to grasp onto whatever it is holding onto. If it was climbing a helicopter or a plane, it just falls on its own. It's called the snake line. Say the snake line. In as much as there is a snake line in the natural realm, there is a snake line in the supernatural realm. Hallelujah. The Bible says, as Jesus Christ was praying, he passed the snake line. He, of course, I'm paraphrasing. It doesn't say that. It says his face began to change. 
It means even though you are seated on a mountain, he entered heaven. Do you realize? He entered the realm of eternity. Because in eternity, the people who are dead, they are already alive. Because God has no future. God lives in eternity. All of time to God is now. Say all of time. To God is now. Yes, that's why he says in Mark chapter 11 verse 20, if you come to him desiring something, believe that you receive it as you are praying, you shall have it. Believe that you receive it as you are praying, because as you, are praying, you are not in the natural realm, you are in the supernatural realm. Hallelujah. As you are praying, you are not in the realm of the flesh, you are in the realm of the spirit. You are connected to God who lives in the realm of eternity. Say, as I'm praying, I leave the earth realm. Pass through the snake line and enter the realm of God's presence. That's where you start to sense a, a, a strange presence around you, even though you are still in your house. Supernaturally, you would have passed beyond the earth. That's where you start to see visions and hear the voice of God. There is no one among us who can't hear the voice of God here. Hallelujah. The, the issue is, where are you standing? If you are standing in the natural realm, hoping to hear God who is in the supernatural realm, you will be wasting your time. For me to communicate with my wife when I am at work, I need to, be, to, to have something to assist me to communicate with her. I need a device to assist me. And prayer is that device. When you, when you rise, when you allow your spirit to rise in prayer, you allow God to, be, to, to fill you with his presence, to fill you with his nature. I'm telling you, you will begin to hear the voice of God. Hallelujah. You will begin to hear the voice of God. Say, oh Lord Jesus, I want to hear your voice very clearly. Say, oh Lord Jesus, I want to hear you very clearly. James chapter 4, verse 7 and verse 8. It says, therefore submit to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. It didn't say resist the devil and you will flee from you. It says, first of all, do and submit to God. Resist the devil and you will flee from you. And then in verse 8, it brings that thought which I was telling you about. Draw near to God and you will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Hallelujah. Draw near to God and you will draw near to you. So when you draw near to God in prayer, he will draw near to you. And I promise you, he is drawing near even at this moment. Say he is near me. Say he is near me. Let us go to Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. I want to read verse 39. Verse 39. Coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives as he was accustomed, and his disciples also followed him. When he came to the place, he said to them, pray that you may not enter into temptation. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, pray that you may not enter into temptation. Let me tell you something about temptation. Temptation is a place where you enter automatically if you are prayerless. Hallelujah. In down Jos in Genela Gushend. We are born to super at Lotungen in our big words. Snongo itigaso. Uzum tes it ah. Loguting at Kalis and Jani e relationship lend to our mundu velanguas. Umben lomfas or mundanguas. Nas born as a singer of Anga and Ula Mang. What Kalis or Ege Lugutandas. Pray that you do not enter into temptation. Uzo tangwa zuti mali ngai tatanja ngabona sempumi au tatangi mali wachonje 
pray that you do not enter into temptation. Uzwanguwa zuti nkune ngi mtetisa njani ngenlambi, nkala kata enlambi, nga kunu kui kuluma nga kasindis, pray that you do not enter into temptation. Hallelujah. When you pray now, you will have an awareness of who you are because you will be thinking with God, talking with God and acting with God. And because God does not speak foul language and God does not think foul thoughts, you, you, you will know foul thoughts when they come that this is from an external source. I resist you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There is an, an equation. I don't know whether it's an equation or something. But there is a clear mathematical relationship. Prayerlessness means sinfulness. Prayerfulness means sinlessness. You can't have a prayerful life like Elijah. Who would spend 40 days alone in the wilderness. And have a sinful life. You can't spend 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness like Jesus Christ. And then after those 40 days and 40 nights you go to a beer hall to celebrate the end of your 40 day fast. Look at your neighbor and say, pray that you do not enter into temptation. It's very easy to access the presence of God. You read the word of God and you pray. Say, pray that you may not enter into temptation. Now, it's, it, do you realize that According to Jesus, you are the one who, who, who enters into temptation. Now, initially, when he taught them to pray, he said, do not lead us into temptation. That's what he said. But he's now uh, elaborating when he's just about to die. That in reality, it's not God who actually leads you into temptation. You enter on your own. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because for a person who is prayerless, every situation is a temptation. Mfaso merit, ongeko merit, mtuana, everything is a temptation to a person who is prayerless. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say pray that you may not enter into temptation. Yes. When you pray, you become an overcomer. When Elijah prayed in the wilderness, he was told in a vision that there was a widow at Zaro path. He was told the specific place that he was going to find the widow. And the widow ministered to Elijah. Why? Because he prayed. Hallelujah. And when the drought ended, it didn't just end. Elijah had to pray. So that the drought would not continue. I don't want to prolong this issue. But say pray. That you may not enter into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw. And he knelt down and prayed. Because Jesus Christ practiced what he told others. Saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your, yours be done. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. So when you commit yourself to prayer like Jesus Christ, I decree to you that the angels of God will manifest to you. They will appear to you. They will strengthen you. The angels of God are at your disposal. According to Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14, it says, Are they not ministering spirits sent forth to minister to those who will inherit salvation? Say, I'm an heir of salvation. And being in Akon, he prayed more earnestly. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. So Jesus Christ did not just pray a soft prayer. He prayed at the highest level of prayer, where the whole body is engaged in prayer. Body, soul, and spirit are engaged in what? In prayer. And the mighty presence, atomic and dynamic power of God is released when you pray. Even the mighty ministering angels, they cannot stand anymore. They will actually strengthen you. 
The angels are at your disposal. Let us go to Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14, as I conclude. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister to those who will inherit salvation? These are angels. The Bible is talking of angels. And also to solidify that thought, let us go to Psalm chapter 91. Psalm chapter 91. Psalm chapter 91. Say, God is my refuge. Say, God is my refuge. Say, God is my refuge. Psalm chapter 91. I want to read um, from verse 9. Because you have made the Lord your co the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. So you position yourself for angelic ministry when you commit yourself to God. Say, my commitment to God is increasing daily. Say, my love for God is increasing every day. Say, O oh Lord Jesus, I love you so much. Let us go to Luke chapter 9 as I conclude. Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9 as I conclude. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, O oh Lord Jesus. Say, O oh Lord Jesus. Touch my life and transfigure it. Say, O oh Lord Jesus, I need you to touch me. Luke chapter 9, verse 28. Now it came to pass about eight days after these sayings that he took John, Peter, John, and James and went up on a mountain to pray. As he prayed, the appearance of his face was altered, and his robe became white and glistening. I challenge you that you should pray until your clothing changes. convicted by the Holy Spirit in their heart. Hallelujah. They feel a conviction of the Holy Spirit because they will be looking at the glory of God. I want to ask you, when you are from a church service and they are looking at you, what do they see on a Sunday or on Thursday like today? What do they see? Do they see an ordinary person or they see the glory of God? Say they see the glory of God. As, as he prayed, this is Jesus who was praying. The appearance of his face was altered. And this robe became white and glistening. This is the secret of the power of Jesus. That as he engaged God the Father, he was always being transformed. For the benefit of the apostles, it happened in the natural. So that they could see what was hidden all along. Let us stand in the presence of God.